السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم um, إن شاء الله today we will finish uh, finally the search session um, so far we discussed uh, multiple uh, search strategies uh, DFS, BFS, uh, iterative deepening, um, uniform course search, greedy and A star and we uh, last time we talked about um, what is the condition for A star to be uh, optimal we talked about admissible functions and or admissible heuristics and we talked about how we can find admissible heuristics using relaxed problems. Uh, today inshallah we'll continue talking uh, a bit uh, about uh, heuristics and the relations between heuristics and then we will uh, switch to the last topic of this session which is graph search. What we mean by semi-lattice of heuristics here is uh, um, the uh, what we mean actually in, in terms of relationships between heuristics. Let me first start with um, a trivial heuristic which is estimating always the cost to be zero. Okay, so let's assume that we have a heuristic that always says zero. Okay, any estimation, it's zero. Is that an admissible heuristic or not? If the heuristic is always saying zero, it gives, giving us zero always, would that be ad, an admissible heuristic, heuristic or not? Any uh, any thoughts? What do you mean by admissible heuristic? Sad. What do you mean by the condition? Uh, which uh, which question you are answering now? Uh, I was uh, asking what is yeah the admiss admissibility. Admissibility means what? Yes. Yes, less than or equal to the actual actual uh, to cost. Yes, to the goal. Yes. Now, if uh, who said that? We didn't mention the lower. We didn't mention the lower limit, uh, but actually zero is less than or equal to uh, the true cost. Okay, so zero is considered admissible by definition. The definition didn't didn't give us any uh, lower limit. It gives us only an upper limit, which is the true cost. Uh, is negative admissible? Think about it, uh, <laughs> Hamza. Um, but zero is admissible. Okay, zero is admissible. Um, if that's the case, if that's the case, then what is it in terms of the strategies that we uh, studied so far? Uh, no, all the strat uh, all strategies, and doesn't have to to be sad uh, answering. By the way, uh, you can of course, but but uh, I'm, I'm talking to everyone. If, if that's the case, if we, uh, if we said that a zero heuristic will be, uh, will be admissible or is admissible, what is it in terms of strategies that we, uh, that we studied? Think about it. If we said that the estimated cost, which is the uh, cost to the goal, is zero, what is the total cost now? The total cost now will be the backward cost, right? Because we said that the cost for a star is backward cost plus forward cost. Now the forward, forward cost is gone. We only have the backward cost. Which strategy depends only on the backward cost? Among the ones that we discussed earlier. Hamza? Yes. 
Yes, it will be exactly a uniform cost search because uniform cost search only consider the backward uh, backward cost. Okay, so it will be still optimal. Remember that we said that uniform cost search is optimal, but the problem here is that we didn't uh, use anything about the goal and it will be very slow. Okay, so we can say that uniform cost search is a special case of A star when the heuristic is zero. And that's the extreme of using the exact cost. That's why in that structure, which relates heuristics uh, with each other, we will have at the bottom the zero heuristic, which is the slowest, and the exact heuristic at the, at the top on the other extreme, which is the uh, uh, fastest in terms of uh, finding the solution, but in terms of the, I mean, in terms of the steps uh, to find the solution, but uh, the uh, computation, as we said last time, will be high. And in, in many cases, of course, we don't know uh, the exact solution, so it's not, it's not uh, uh, meaningful here. But as the, as the extreme, it is the exact cost in one side, and the zero cost in the other side. Both are, of course, optimal, but there is a trade-off. Now, in between, there are many heuristics. Some of them are better than the other in terms of uh, being closer to, uh, uh, to the, uh, the actual cost. So, when, so here we define dominance. A heuristic dominates another heuristic if the estimated value of the, uh, of the first heuristic is always for every state greater than or equal to the estimated value for that state using the other heuristic. Okay, so dominates here means it's always higher. So the estimated cost is always higher, which means that it is uh, closer to the um, uh, to the uh, actual cost. Of course, here we're talking about everything is 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 admissible here. So we are still uh, below the actual cost, but we are closer to the actual cost. If that's the case, then we put it in the uh, semi-lattice uh, structure, the, the structure that relates uh, uh, heuristics uh, to, with each other. We put HA higher than HC. Okay, That means that HA dominates HC, which means that for every state, the cost, the estimated cost uh, for uh, uh, that A gives us is always higher than C. Now, it's not always the case that two heuristics, one will dominate the other. Sometimes the first state can give a higher cost in some states, and the other one will give higher, higher costs, uh, or estimated, of course, higher cost in uh, other states. So if that's the case, then we cannot say one dominates the other. We put them at the same level like that. So here, HB and HA, none of them dominates the other. But we can combine them by taking the maximum of them at each state. Okay, so if I get the maximum of them, it will always be greater than or equal to any of them, which means that the maximum uh, heuristic now will dominate both. So that's why it is on, uh, it, uh, that's why it is higher than both uh, heuristics, but these are not dominating, so they are at the same level. Okay, so it is always the case that if we have two admissible heuristics, we can get one that is closer to uh, to the goal by getting the maximum of them. Of course, if uh, if uh, we have the case that none of them dominates the other. Okay, so this uh, semi lattice um, uh, gives us an uh, uh, an indication of the trade off uh, between uh, getting a, a, a heuristic that is more accurate versus a heuristic that is uh, very easy to compute, like zero. Um, so in, in one extreme, we'll get uh, uh, a very slow, uh, we, we will find the optimal solution in a very slow uh, way, and the other extreme, uh, we'll find also the optimal solution, but it will be, it will be uh, in, in less expansion of nodes, but we might need uh, much more computations. Uh, Hamza. Yes. A bit more time by taking just the maximum, the maximum value, which is one comparison, and it's negligible, I think.
of course we oh, of course are oh, you mean you mean it's uh, it's uh, of course it will be more computations than each one alone I, I thought that you are talking about both together yes of course the, it will be more computations than each one alone yes no that's the trade-off you add more computations you get closer to the uh, to the perfect case okay um, so now we are done with heuristics and now we will switch to the last topic in this session which is graph search remember all of what we did before was tree search we were expanding the search tree and we were searching uh, we were uh, um, expanding the search tree uh, over time until we find a solution okay and of course the expansion depended on uh, the strategy the search strategy uh, that uh, that we uh, that we are using but of course uh, as we said earlier tree search, in tree search we expand we can expand the same node more than one time so as an extreme example look at this state graph we will find that you can reach from a to b in two ways from b to c in two ways and so on so if we expanded the search tree we'll get something like this Okay, so in this search tree, you will see that um, this subtree, for example, is exactly this subtree. Why is that? Because here we got to state B, and here we got to state B, and we expanded both. So this is repetition in computations, of course, right? Um, so that's that's an, uh, a feature in tree search that we don't care about repeating or visiting or expanding actually the same state twice. But now we will consider that, and once we consider that, this is called graph search because we will not visit or actually we will not not visiting. We will not expand a node more than once so that we uh, avoid repeating. Uh, um, exploring paths that we, we already explored in the past. Uh, here's another example. In BFS, you know that we are uh, expanding the tree. Here's the, this is the search tree. We are expanding the tree in tiers. So in this case, the uh, circled um, uh, states are seen before, are, visit, are actually expanded before. So um, if you remember, uh, in BFS, we will start with S here, then D, E, P. Now, when we expand B, C, E, this E was expanded before, okay, uh, to, to that entire subtree. Okay, or will be expanded to that uh, subtree, okay. Um, so, we should not, when we get to this E, we should not expand it again. So, we should try to avoid expanding it again because we will uh, or we had expanded it before okay and we will get the same exact subtree anyway of course that might have side effect on the solutions that we will we will get and we will discuss that but that's the main idea of graph search the main idea of graph, graph search is to never expand a state twice never expand the state twice okay now in order to uh, implement that the only change that we need to, to have in the algorithm is a mechanism of checking whether the current state that we are to expand, we are about to expand, was expanded before or not. And to do that, the simplest way or the, uh, the best way to do that is to have a structure where I can check easily whether a state was expanded before or not. We call that structure, structure a closed set. And actually it is implemented as a set. So the closed set will include all expanded states uh, or all the states that were expanded in the past. So basically graph search is tree search plus the set of expanded states. Whenever I need to expand the search tree and before expanding a specific node, I need to check if it has been expanded before or not. Okay. Um, if it's not new, which means that it was expanded before, then we will skip it. We will not expand it. 
Okay, so we will get it out, get get it out of the fringe and just discard it, and we'll get an, a new one from the fringe. If not, if it was not seen before, if it, it was not expanded before, then we will add it to the closed set. So that when we of course we will expand it and we will add it to the closed set so that we will not expand it again uh, in the future. Uh, questions? Nice. I hear, I heard uh, someone maybe asking or wanted to ask. Okay, now um, here is the algorithm. As I said, it is basically the tree search algorithm plus this trick of, uh, of the closed set. So you will see uh, here, um, where is it? Yeah, the closed set is in initially, of course, an empty set. Then, <clears throat> then uh, when we uh, get one node from the fringe, uh, of course, after checking whether we reach the goal test or not, we check if it's not in the closed set. So if it's not in the closed set, that means that it was not expanded before, then we add it to the closed set and we expand it. Okay? If it was in the closed set, so we will skip this, these steps, and that means that we'll go back and uh, get a new uh, node from the fringe if the fringe is not empty. So that's exactly what we did in research, but uh, but now we avoid expanding a node twice. And that's why it's called graph search, because graph doesn't have repeated nodes. Um, each node is, is unique, um, so that's why it's called graph search. And the main idea is to uh, save time uh, so that algorithm should be faster in this case uh, by avoiding uh, the expansion of already expansion uh, already expanded uh, states before. Uh, here are I think a couple of uh, of, uh, uh, of suggestions in terms of uh, implementation. We should store the closed set as a set, not a list. Um, and that's for efficiency. Anyone knows why we should do that? So, uh, of course, you know from data structure that there is um, a data structure called set, and there is a list. And here we are saying, let's store the closed set as actually a set, okay, not a list or not an array. Why is that, Yusuf? Um, yes, but we will maintain it to be not having duplicates anyway. And either, even if it's a list, we will make sure that it will not have duplicates. That's the definition of, the, of them. But in terms of implementation, if, if we used any of them, we will make sure that they don't have duplicates. So that's not the issue, Yusuf. So what is the point here, Faisal? Ah, if you keep it sorted, you mean? Okay. Okay. So in this case, it, it won't be a list, or it should be something that will uh, will use the fact that they are sorted. So like uh, search tree, for example. So it's not a, li a, li a list in this case. So I think you are getting closer to the answer, Faisal. So the issue here is the efficiency. Searching in a list, you will need to go through the element one by one. So you will need to. Uh, if it's not sorted, of course, uh, then you will have sequential search, which is linear in, in time. But in a set, you can do it in uh, search tree, binary search tree, for example. Um, then uh, you will get an order of log n, uh, which n is the size of the, of the element. So it's a logarithmic in terms of the time. Much, much, much better, better than uh, a sequential search. Hamza? Uh, you mean hash table, Yanni? Uh, you can, you can, uh, but it will need more time, more uh, space in this case. You can. Yes, 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 you can. Uh, but uh, as as I said, the overhead, the, the the downside will be that you will have you need more space. But definitely, you should not use a list. Okay. 
Um, next. Okay. Okay. Um, the other the other question now the next question is whether graph search will have any effect. Of course, we are talking about negative effect here on completeness. Okay. So what is completeness? Completeness means if we have a solution, we will find it. If that's the case, then this algorithm is complete. Now, let's assume that tree search with specific strategy is complete. If we use the same strategy, but with graph search in this case, will it be complete also? If there is a solution, will it, uh, is it guaranteed to find that solution? Not exactly the same solution, but will it find the solution? Will it be complete in that case? Okay, Saad. Okay, exactly. So we are not losing anything uh, because we will avoid expanding something that we already expanded before. So if there was a solution, then we would have, we will find it uh, in the first place. Okay. Um, so we will not lose a solution in this case. Hamza. <clears throat> Okay, you are always thinking about very special cases. Um, forget about negative cost, Hamza. Negative cost is not really realistic. Okay, so we are not talking about negative cost here. Assume that the cost should always be either zero, which is a special case for uniform cost search, and or, or a positive, which is the realistic case. Okay. Um, okay, so did you find, did you understand the answer now? So the answer here is, uh, of course, REC means uh, will affect it negatively. Um, so the answer here is no. Okay. <clears throat> and, and the reason why, because uh, we would not lose any, and if there is a solution that we would found, find it uh, in tree search, we will find it in graph search because we will not, uh, will not uh, avoid ex uh, exploring any path. It's just that we will save time by not expanding uh, the same node twice. Okay, so the answer is no. Now, how about optimality? If the uh, tree search would, fi would find the optimal solution, will, est will, uh, will graph search find the optimal solution? Here, the answer is not straightforward. Let's go through an example first and then think together uh, about the, the situation. Okay, let's consider this state, gra state space graph. And uh, we will use uh, a star, so we will need the heuristic values. If you check the, um, um, the heuristic function here, is it admissible or not? Is it admissible or not? Okay, it seems, okay, random. Why? So what what is what is the condition of admissible uh, heuristic random? You are you are making you are making it harder on yourself, hard, harder on yourself, uh, Ghanim. The definition is much simpler than that. So the definition is is the following: uh, the heuristic is admissible if, for every state, the heuristic value is less than or equal to the actual cost to the goal. So what should you do, Ghanim, if you want to check the admissibility of any heuristic? You should go for every state and compute the actual cost from that state to the goal, of course, in the, in the best way, and, uh, the, and, and then compare that value with the estimated cost, which is given by the heuristic value here. 
if it's always the case that the heuristic value is less than the uh, the actual cost, then this function, this heuristic, is admissible. Is it clear, Ghanem? Okay. Now, if if I asked you to check now uh, whether this heuristic is admissible or not, what would be your answer? Yeah, you need to check, right? So, for example, for this node, okay, uh, the heuristic value is four, right? Now, what is what is the forward cost, which is uh, not not the forward cost, the, the actual cost from that state to the goal state? Four, right? So four is less than or equal to four, so it's okay. Let's let's see B. What the, the estimated value here is one, right? What is the actual cost from B to the goal? Five. Okay, so one is less than or equal to five. So it's still okay. If you checked for every node like that, you will find that all of them satisfying the, uh, the condition, which means that this function, uh, this heuristic is admissible. Okay, is that clear, Ghanem? Okay, now, if it's admissible, and that's uh, that's now not not to random only. Uh, if it's as admissible, then tree search of course will be optimal, as we uh, discussed last time. If the function, if the heuristic is admissible, then a star search, a star tree search, is optimal, which means that a star uh, tree search will find the optimal solution. Now let's see what will happen in tree search. And what will happen in graph search for this specific example? For tree search, we'll start with S. S has the cost of 3. We'll get it out of the fringe. We expand it to A and B, right? Uh, A has cost of 2 because the backward cost is 1. The forward cost uh, is 4. So it's 5. Uh, sorry, we are talking about A now. It's 5. B is 2 because the backward cost is 1 and the forward cost is 1, so B is 2. Now, which one will be expanded? The one with the uh, lowest cost, which is B. So we will expand B to C. C now has the cost of 4. Uh, why is that? Because 1 plus 1, that's the backward is 2, and the forward is 1. So, uh, sorry. Uh, so, okay, no. Uh, wait a second. Ah, uh, this C is coming from S to B, okay? So the, the backward cost for for C here is 3 because we are coming from S to B, S through, through B. So the backward cost is 1 plus 2, and the forward cost is 1, so the total cost is 4. Now, on the fringe, we have this one and this one. Of course, this, is, this has the lowest cost, so we'll expand it to G. Now, G uh, is 6 because we are coming through this way. And uh, the forward is zero, of course, because we are in the uh, goal state. So the total is six. Now we have A and G on the fringe. Which one should be expanded? Of course, A, because A is total five. We get to C. Now C is three, because we are coming through A now. One plus one, plus this one, this will be three. Now we have on the fringe three and six. Of course, we will choose three. Remember, we are doing tree search now, not graph search, okay? Tree search. Now, we will expand C to G. G now has uh, 5 uh, because we are coming this way. 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 0, that will be 5. Now, which one should be uh, out of the fringe? This one, which is actually the optimal solution, okay? So, that this, the tree search algorithm, because this function is admissible, found the optimal solution which is uh, going uh, this way okay right now let's think about what would happen if we do graph search what would change here any answer anyone other than sad Should I call by name? Someone who didn't appear before 
for a long time. Uh, Muhammad Ahmed, are you with us? Okay, can you try with me? Or can you think with me? Muhammad? Okay, now, uh, did you get the question? The question is, if we, um, uh, if we do, if we use graph search here, what will happen? Yeah, let's, let's go from the beginning, okay? Um, we'll start with S. So graph search is exactly like uh, tree search until we, what? No, no, I mean, in general, what is the condition where uh, tree search will be different from graph search? Yes. We'll hit the node. What do you mean by? You mean uh, we'll hit a node that we expanded before, right? So graph search should stop and 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 make a decision. Yeah, if 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 the node that we are to be to expand now, visit uh, was expanded before. Okay, so assume that we are keeping the closed set. If we go back, the closed set will always include the nodes that we expand over time. So in the beginning, it is empty, but then we expand, uh, keep it uh, uh, open. Uh, then we expand S to A and B. Okay, now we will expand B. So once we expand B, we check if it's in the closed set or not. It is not. So we add it. Okay. And then we expand it. Yeah, so that we so that we don't repeat it again. Yes. And then we expand it. Now we have C and A. Which one will be expanded next, Ahmed? Uh, Muhammad, right? Muhammad. Why A? <coughs> No, but we have on the fringe now we have A and C, not B. Yes. We'll go with, with C. Right. Now we should expand C. But before we expand C, because we are doing graph search now, we should check the closed set. So is C in the closed set now? No, the closed set is S and B. Where is C here? Okay. So the closed set only has the ones that were expanded before. We didn't expand C yet. Okay. So C is not there. So we'll expand it. And now we add it to the closed set. So after we expand it or before, whatever, uh, once we get it out of the fringe, we will add it to uh, the closed set. Now we have, mm -hmm, go ahead. Now, C is in the closed set now, but on the fringe we have A and G. Which one should be expanded next? Why G, uh, Muhammad? A has total of 5, G has total of 6. So we should expand the lowest, right? Yeah, so we expand A to C. Of course, before we expand A, we check if it's in the closed set or not. It's not. So we add it to the closed set. Okay, and then expand it. Now we have on the fringe C and G. Okay, which uh, C should be expanded now, right? So we selected C, but we need to check before we expand it, we need to check if it's in the closed set or not. Now it is in the closed set, right? Yes, so it is in the closed set. That means that we will not expand it. Because that means that we expanded before. Okay, so we're not expanded. Okay, now, what should we do? Ah, we will expand this G, which means that we are done. Okay, because we, we get the goal state uh, out on the fringe, and it's satisfying, satisfying the goal test, of course. So, now, we didn't get the optimal path. We get another path, which is S, B, C, G. S, B, C, G. Okay. So that example shows 
that A star graph search might give you a uh, uh, suboptimal solution, a suboptimal solution, or might not find the optimal solution. So generally, if if we didn't make any further changes, the graph search algorithm, the A star graph search algorithm, is not optimal with the conditions that we have now. And even if the heuristic, we show that we showed that the heuristic is admissible. And if the heuristic is, is admissible, we said earlier that the tree search A star algorithm is optimal. But it seems like the graph search algorithm with uh, this condition, with A star, is not optimal generally. Type. Let's think why why that happened. That happened actually because we thought that when we saw C before, we should stop this C. But to find the optimal solution, we need to make sure that when we expanded C before, it was in the best way. It was, we reached C in the best path. In the, in the optimal path, okay? But that's not guaranteed with the current setup. It's not guaranteed that the first time we see the state C, we reach it in the uh, optimal way. It's not guaranteed, okay? So that's why sometimes A star with this condition will, yes, we will avoid this C, and we will avoid, of course, its subtree, which is here, but, it might be the case that we reach it C first in an unoptimal way or a suboptimal way, which of course will lead to a suboptimal solution. So in this case, we'll have to find um, another condition, which is consistency. So the heuristic has to be consistent, and of course we will discuss now what we mean by consistency for for the uh, uh, for A star graph search to be optimal. Type. The main idea of admissibility or consistency is to have this, that the estimated heuristic cost will be less than or equal to the actual cost. So for admissibility, this is done um, in the scope of every state. So for the state, the estimated cost to the goal, which is the heuristic, heuristic cost here, is less than or equal to the actual cost to the goal. Now let's see that on an example quickly so that we can compare between admissibility and consistency. So if we have a state A, then H of A, which is the backward cost, uh, sorry, which is the forward cost, should be less than or equal to the actual cost from A to G. So if the heuristic value is 4 and we have G here, then this uh, uh, path, the uh, we estimated it to be the cost to be 4, and actually the cost is 4, of course, can be more than 4. The condition is that this value has to be less than the total cost from the actual cost from A to G. Now, this is what we studied already. That's admissibility. Consistency is similar to the admissibility, but it's not applied on states. It's applied, it, it's applied on states and uh, by default the states, but mainly they are applied on the arcs, on the edges. Okay, so the heuristic arc cost, and we will explain what we mean by that now, is less than or equal to the actual cost of each arc. Okay, now let me show you an example. Okay, let's say we have this case where, uh, let me change this now, uh, where the estimated cost at A is 4, and the estimated cost at C is 1, and the, the actual cost of this transition is 1. And imagine that I'm, I'm telling you the cost from here is estimated to be 4, but after a cost of 1, the cost decreases to just 1. But that, that doesn't make sense, right? Yani how, can, how can the estimation um, jump down from 4 to 1, although we just spend the cost of 1 here? So that's not consistent. Okay, so consistency means that the diff, the, action, the the estimated cost of this arc, which is the estimated cost here minus the estimated cost here, should be optimistic, should be less than or equal to the actual cost. 
So that's the consistency. It's similar to admissibility, but it's applied on every age instead of every state. It's, it's more restrictive, okay, more restricted. It's on every age, the estimation has to be less than the actual cost of that age. So in, in a formula, it's H of A minus H of C, which is the estimated cost going from A to C, should be less than or equal to the, co the actual cost from A to C, which is the actual cost of, the, uh, of that step <clears throat> or that H. So to make this consistent, this has to be two or one. Both will, will, uh, will work. Okay? Both will work. So that's, uh, that's the condition for consistency. Let's see if we um, maintain that, what will be the consequences? What will that give us if it happens? So the consequences, okay, keep, keep your questions until I, I, I finish this and then I will open the door for questions. If that happens, what, uh, what will happen, okay? If we maintain consistency for every age, then the F value along a path will never decrease. What is the F value? The F value is the total cost. Remember in A star, we compute for every state the total cost, which is the backward cost plus the forward cost. If we maintain consistency, if the heuristic is consistent, which means that every age is consistent, then the estimated values at every state as we go along a path will increase or will never decrease in more accurate uh, way will never decrease so which means that it will be either the same or bigger as we go over the path as as we expand more the cost the, the total cost will be more okay let's see why is that first and then think about what is the meaning of that or what what uh, what benefit we will get if we have this now look at this condition. This condition is the condition of consistency. I will just manipulate it by moving H of C to the other side. So now H of A is less than or equal to the cost uh, H to C plus H of C. Now let's um, add to both sides the value of G of A. Okay, forget now about F of A and F of C here. Look at uh, this side and that side. Now, look at G of A plus H of A. What is G of A plus H of A? G of A is the backward cost of A. Backward cost of A. So, this is from the start state to A plus H of A, which is the heuristic value at A, which is the forward cost. So, the total of them is F of A, is the value that we consider in A star. That's what we call F of A. Okay, so that's the left side. Now, the right side G of A plus cost of A to C. What is this? G of A is the cost to, to <clears throat> go from the start state to A. Plus cost from A to C. So both together, both together, this value is what? This is the cost to go from the start state, not to A band, but to C. Okay, so that means this is G of what? Of C. That's the backward cost of C. This is backward cost to G, to A, plus the cost of the H, so it will be uh, uh, G of C. Now, G of C plus H of C, this is F of C. So now, if you look at it as a whole, you will see that F of A, the left side is equal to F of A, and the right side is equal to F of C. That means that F of A is less than, let me change this better. Uh, then that means that F of A is less than or equal to F of C. F of A is less than or equal to F of C. Of course, if we keep the uh, consistency over all edges, that will be always the case. As you move from one state to the other, of course, again, uh, before Hamza saying, what if the cost is negative? We assume that, of course, here the cost is not negative. As we go uh, along the path, then it will always be the case that the uh, value will never decrease. It might be the same or it will 
increase, okay? Because f of a will always be less than or equal to f of c. What is a and c generally? It's the source and, it's, and the destination of one arc. If that's the case for every arc, if every arc or every edge is consistent, then it, is always, it would always be the case that as we move, as we move over a path in the search tree, which means we are expanded, we are expanding, as we expand more nodes, the cost will generally increase or will be the same, but let's think simply that it will increase. Now that's the consequence. Now let's think about it. If the cost will increase, that means that if I will visit, if I will have to expand the node again, then I will reach it in a state where the estimated cost will be higher than the cost that I reached first, which means that whenever I expand the node first, the cost to it is the optimal. It's, it is proved. We will not go through the proof, uh, the proof, but it is proved that if that's the case, then the A star will be optimal. Why is that? Because we will always, it will always be the case that whenever we visit, we know, not visit, whenever we expand the node again, the first time we expanded it, the cost to it was optimal. So, ignoring the second one will not lose anything, will not uh, affect the optimality. Actually, when we visit it again and expand it again, it was, uh, it has more cost than the first one, which means that the new path that by which we reached the state again and expand it was uh, has higher cost than the first one. Okay, so what happened in the previous example, if we go back to that uh, example, when we say that it's not optimal, will not happen. Because if you think about this heuristic now, you will find that it is not consistent. Why is that? Um, for example, this arc. What is the estimated cost of this arc? No, that's actually consistent. Which one is not consistent? Uh, this one. This one is not consistent. What is the estimated cost of that arc? It's 4 minus 2. But which is 2. But 2 is not less than or equal to 1. It's greater than 1. So the estimated cost for that arc was actually higher than the actual cost, which means it, uh, uh, pessimistic. Okay? Consistent means every arc has to be uh, consistent. Okay? So the estimated cost has to be optimistic on every arc. It, it, it happened, if it happens in one arc, then the um, um, the uh, the algorithm will not find, A star will not find the optimal solution or, or because the, it was not, actually the heuristic will not be consistent and thus the, uh, the graph search algorithm might not find the optimal solution. It's not guaranteed to be optimal. But it will be guaranteed if, uh, as we say here, after so this, if H is consistent, then A star will be, A star graph search is proved to be optimal. Okay? So again, this is the conclusion. A star graph search is optimal if H is consistent. Now, if I change it, yes, I will take questions in one minute. If I change this to be 3 instead of uh, graph, then I want you to think about this. Can this be the same or it should be admissible or what? Remember that consistency is more restricted than admissibility. If a heuristic is admissible, it is consistent, but not the opposite. It's not guaranteed in the opposite direction. Okay? Admissibility is a special case of uh, consistency or it's less uh, restrictive than consistency. Consistency, by default, it is admissible. Ad admissible. And if a heuristic is consistent, then, of course, it is also admissible. But if a heuristic is admissible, it's not guaranteed to be consistent. Okay? Thinking that way, think whether we, uh, we should change this or not. So that's the summary. Um, tree search. I'll change this. Uh, tree search. 
Um, a star will be optimal if the heuristic is admissible. Uh, graph search, A star will be optimal if the heuristic is consistent. Consistency implies admissibility. Generally, generally, if if you get the heuristic using relaxed problems, usually in most cases it will be both admissible and consistent. Consistent, but of course it's not guaranteed. And that's the summary. A star uses backward uh, backward costs, which is like uh, uniform cost search, and forward cost, which is like uh, greedy search. So it's it's a mix of both. Uh, optimal with admissibility for tree search, with consistency for graph search, and uh, we always use, uh, we try to use relaxed problems to get the heuristic. Questions? Hamza. Here, this one, this one, this one, one before that. This one. Uh, good question. Uh, estimated cost. Um, Why is that, Hamza? Yeah, 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 sure, sure, yes, 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 if, yeah, yeah, if I, if I said it in the reverse order, uh, maybe I'm mistaken, yes, but yes, the estimated cost, let me think about it again. Uh, yeah, so logically the cost should decrease. But it's not guaranteed, by the way. It's not guaranteed, Hamza. Um, I think it's the absolute value anyway, because it's not guaranteed always that the, cost, the estimated cost will decrease. You assume that the estimated cost will decrease as I... Uh, make a step, but maybe that step is in the bad direction. So the estimated cost there will be higher. Uh, so I will check that if it's actually should be always the absolute value or not. I will check and get back to you, inshallah. Uh, I will take Saad first, and then if we have time, Saad? Yes. The definition of the age. It's a it's an age age. What do you mean by all the ages? Uh, so are you talking about the direction here? So it's it's an age in the search tree. So always this in the search tree you expand from the parent to the to the child. Yes. Yes, every age, ma. It's it's a directed gra graph or three, I. So it's every age. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. We. Okay. We we talked about we talked about admissibility before, right? And we said that um, by relaxing the problem, um, we we don't have to to know uh, the actual cost to to sh to see that this heuristic is is admissible, right? You were with us uh, in that lecture, or maybe not. So if you go back to the one of the previous lectures, I think maybe two lectures uh, before, we showed that. You don't need to, to know that, although the condition is like that, but you don't really need to know the actual cost to show that this is admissible because it's optimistic. So you are sure that the cost will be at least the estimated cost without knowing the actual cost. 
Okay, so admissibility doesn't need that. For um, uh, consistency, this is related to what I just mentioned here, that in general, in general, most of the admissible heuristics tend to be consistent. It's not easy to find one. I'm not saying that it's easy okay, to find one. But in most cases, the heuristic will be admissible. Of course, you will not be able to know or to prove in advance that it is admissible, uh, it is uh, consistent, other, unless you know the, the optimal solution. Okay, but in most cases, if you relax the problem, then uh, the admissible heuristic will be also consistent. But it's not easy to to uh, to get, of course. In in some of the problems, you need you really need to try uh, and and think about the domain of the problem and the problem itself to get something. Uh, that that is consistent okay any other questions okay then we'll stop here inshallah and talk to you on uh, sunday okay assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh